Hello, my name is Josh Storschein and I'll be talking to you today about Grey Hat Python. Uh, the book that I'll be basing this presentation on is from the Grey Hat Python book, uh, Programming for Hackers and Reverse Engineers by Justin Seitz, or Seitz, uh, No Starch Press. <clears throat> what we'll be covering today, uh, we'll be just given a brief introduction and overview of debuggers and common debugger design, uh, talk a little bit as, uh, about Python and just looking at some code examples to start familiarizing the the syntax and the structure of the language. Uh, we're going to take a look at immunity and then the pi commands module within the immunity debugger. Uh, this is something I think it would be is worth pointing out just as, since we've used immunity throughout most of this class. Uh, going to talk about hooking and do a more of a non-code based uh, demo of a hook uh, through using immunity. Uh, then move into DLL and code injection with a demo which will lead into the assignment, uh, the solution, and then uh, the wrap up my presentation. So uh, first things first, and what the book covers um, is just getting your, your environment set up. And before we start with that though, just some notes about the book, uh, if you're following along in the book or if you plan on purchasing it. Uh, it is a bit dated, I believe the publication date was 2009, or at least the copyright. So it's a little bit uh, dated as it, uh, you know, it, it's set up for Python 2.5, uh, which 2.7 is the current version, and uh, there's a couple of other projects uh, that it references. Um, most of them I won't talk about in this presentation, uh, that a lot of them don't seem, but those projects don't seem to be maintained, very actively maintained. Um, so I ran into some issues getting some of the modules and some of the other uh, programs to work. The coded samples, um, I find that oftentimes are incorrect. Um, whether they just don't work or there's just slight syntax variations or um, you know they, they require some tweaking uh, you know whether this is to make sure you're actually getting into the code and, and tweaking it to make it work to show that you understand it uh, so that it doesn't just run right out of the box or, or what I'm not 100% sure um, but if you uh, I'll show you later on here as we get this environment set up that you can download all the source code from the No Starch Press website and that a lot of it just doesn't work straight out of the box. So just something to keep in mind whether or not you work through these examples with us, uh, with me in this presentation or I'll pick up the book later on on your own. Uh, next thing, everything that I had to do was in a 32-bit environment. So um, running Windows 7 64-bit natively, I did set up a, a couple different VMs. Uh, my primary one and the one for this presentation will be a 32-bit version of Windows 7. And it just seems like a lot of the tools and a lot of the examples weren't really meant for a Windows 7 or a Vista environment. Uh, a lot of the different uh, help I found on the web um, walked through setting up on the Windows XP Pro. Uh, so it might be something to keep in mind as you uh, as we work through some of these examples. So uh, to get started, as I mentioned, uh, book really bases it off of or to, uh, Python 2.5. Um, I was able to get everything we're going to cover today is going to work with Python 2.7. Uh, so you can see that you can get there, uh, get that at the uh, URL here, and that will be a, just a Microsoft installer. So download it, install it, and get it up and running pretty quick and easy. Uh, immunity debugger. Uh, this is fairly optional. I mean, I, I'm going to show you a, a demo of the Py commands and the, the structure. Yeah, if you want to follow along, uh, there is some code that we will will take from the Grey Hat Python book and use. So um, it might be worth to grab that. Uh, Eclipse and PyDev, uh, he does, the author does have you set up this environment. However, uh, I'm just going to actually use Notepad++ in the command line for this, uh, for my presentation. So uh, it's up to you. Uh, Eclipse is pretty straightforward, although it is a fairly large download, I guess, relatively speaking. Um, and then getting PyDev set up. Um, again, following along in the book, it's not quite the same, uh, but it's still pretty easy. And then to get the source code uh, from, the, uh, from the author, no starch, just go to this URL here, no starch.com, ghpython.htm. It's kind of buried in the middle of the page there, uh, but you can get a zip file, uh, download, extract it, and that'll have everything that we're, that we're going to talk about today. So, um, just to make sure we got everything working, I'm just going to jump into my VM and show you the structure show you a test script and then uh, I like to map out or path out the um, the environment for Python so that when we're running this from the command line we don't have to always be in the actual directory where that executable lives we can just type it out anytime so uh, I'm going to pause the video here and get things set up and continue just a second okay so here is my uh, Windows 7 32-bit VM and if uh, this is more or less uh, I can see my desktop is kind of cluttered but 
um, just assuming that we just got done installing Python 2.7, you can see here uh, that it just creates a, a Python 2.7 folder right off of the root of the drive. Uh, changing into that directory, you can see there's the Python executable, so that'll be what does the uh, runs our Python, and then um, for later on, I've set up my own folder just to kind of keep, keep things organized and under my Python 2.7 um, folder. Uh, the next thing that we want to do just to make sure everything works is if we're in that uh, just a Windows command prompt, uh, DOS command prompt, whatever, and uh, if we just type in Python, uh, we should get this little, uh, you know, the, uh, the, the Python shell with the Python version. And then to quit, uh, we just simply type quit uh, with, the, with the brackets and that gets us out of there. Um, in order to get that to work from anywhere, so let's say we go to, to the root of our drive in Python, it still works. Um, how to get that in Windows anyway, if you go and right click on my computer, go to properties, uh, advanced settings, and then environment variables. You can see down here there's a path and um, just add C colon backslash Python 2.7 and then these are just separated by a uh, semicolon. So once you get that in there uh, that'll allow you to just that adds the Python uh, interpreter to your path. So it makes things a little bit easier um, to maintain. Uh, the next thing is I do have a test script inside here uh, in this folder I talked about and this is just to prove which we got to this shell here so we, we've pretty much already proven that it's going to work um, but just to run it and, and show you here it's, it is a basic um, hello world so head back to that directory and then do python and then test.py and then you can see is our hello world so now that we've got that ready to go um, and as you can see I'm just going to use notepad and uh, the command line in Windows and that's really all we that's all we really need for this presentation all you should need if you're going to try to follow along um, so now we get into debuggers and design so the overall goal of a debugger is to provide dynamic analysis, so attaching to a process as it's running and then analyzing what's going on with that process. Some essentials that we'll need to know is um, the CPU registers, and that's just some all amounts of storage on the CPU, uh, the fastest type of, of memory on in a system. There are eight general purpose registers. Um, starting at the top, the EAX is the accumulator. This is used primarily for uh, calculations of storing return values. EDX, which is the data register, and this is an extension of the EAX register, so uh, helping it with those functions and calculations. Um, ECX is the count register, and what this does is it helps with looping operations, and it's important, although we won't see this again in, in this presentation, it is important to understand the ECX counts downward. Uh, ESI is the source index for data operations and the location of the input data stream. Uh, EDI is the destination index, so that's going to point to the location where the results of that data operation are stored. EBP is the base pointer, so that just simply points to the base of the stack. ESP points to the top of the stack, and EBX is extra storage. So, some more common structures. Uh, not going to really get into too much of this, uh, just because I'm sure we all, uh, you know, confident that we all have a pretty good handle on this by now. Um, but the stack, you know, some store information about how a function is called and the parameters that it takes and then how it should return. Uh, this is first in, last out, or, or philo, philo. Uh, the ESP is going to be one of the important registers here. That's again, it's going to track the top of the stack frame and EBP is going to use to track the bottom of the stack frame. The next big thing is debugger, debugger events. And what a debugger does is it runs essentially an endless loop or if you want to set your code up to run in a you know, defined set of time um, and then it waits for debugging events to occur. So what happens then when that event occurs is the loop is interrupted and a handler is called. Some common events that we'll deal with or that you'll see when debugging are breakpoint hits, memory violations, and then uh, exceptions that are generated by the debug program itself. 
One thing I'd like to just talk about real quick are the scripted versus standalone debugger. Uh, what I'm going to go through here, and very fast, relatively speaking, um, is the you know a custom Python-based Windows debugger versus something like Immunity debugger. And while uh, you know Immunity provides you a, a great tool with a lot of built-in functionality, um, what something like a scripting your own Python debugger can give you is that you can custom code it. You can custom uh, you know create custom logic when events handle that you don't necessarily with with immunity you'd have to wait for the interrupt to happen and then analyze what's going on uh, but with your own python debugger you can code it all out and so that you can automate that a little bit better um, of course there's there's more pros and cons to each one uh, but just something i wanted to throw out there before we got too much further along so uh, with that we've got the idea of breakpoints and there are two main breakpoints soft breakpoints and hard breakpoints uh, the first one, soft breakpoints, are going to be the most common type. And what these do is they simply tell the CPU to halt when executing instructions. It's a single byte instruction. Uh, it's passed, passes control from the attached debuggers um, to the, excuse me, it passes control from whatever the debugger is attached to to the debugger itself, where then its exception handler will pick up and process. Um, first, it's important to note the difference between an instruction and an opcode. So an opcode is the actual machine language command that the CPU executes executes, while the instruction is more the high-level representation of a command for the CPU to execute. So uh, the author makes the an analogy, and I, and I like it, uh, the opcode is kind of the IP address, and the instruction is more the DNS. It's the, the instruction is more of the high-level, helps uh, us humans be able to read and remember it. So here's an example of an instruction, M-O-V-E-A-X, E-B-X, and what this means is simply move the contents of EBX into EAX. So uh, the machine doesn't understand this, much like DNS. Uh, it needs to be in an IP or it needs to be in an opcode. So it converts it into an opcode, which then becomes 8BC3. So if we were looking at this in immunity, in a debugger, and we we're at this memory location, we would see this opcode, and then we'd have these instructions. So if we want to set a soft breakpoint, all we need to do is Send, uh, send that op, set that opcode, one byte of that opcode to the 0xcc or the cc, and it's an interrupt 3. So if we were to do that, you would see in this memory location cc, c3, and then when uh, the, the CPU got to this instruction, the cc, it would actually pause, uh, create a uh, breakpoint. Uh, the next one are hard breakpoints, or hardware breakpoints. Um, these are useful in small number of breakpoints to desire or the debug software cannot be modified. These are breakpoints set specifically at the CPU level. So there's, along with the eight registers, the general purpose registers we talked about, there's um, special debug registers. These are DR0 through DR7. And within those, certain registers are used for certain tasks. Uh, I'm not going to cover these in much detail because I'm not gonna, we're not going to look at any of those codes to set hard breakpoints. Um, but the book does a, a fairly good job of um, covering those, so I recommend you to reference that if you'd like more information. Uh, as well as memory breakpoints, I'm not really going to talk about these, it's just more to be aware that they're there. Um, and they're not really breakpoints, I, it's, the author explains it as being uh, changing of permissions on a page in memory. So um, the book is just kind of hits it high level as well. Um, I'm sure there's some great resources out there on the internet. So um, with that, we're going to actually look at building and the goal of the first few chapters of the book is a Python Windows debugger. So I'm going to get this uh, set up and we're going to look at three main files. It's going to be mydebugger.py, mydebuggerdefines.py, and then mytest.py. Um, again, just, so you, just to reiterate um, that you can get the source from the NoSearch website. So that's a good place to start uh, to get the code and then make some modifications and, and copy and paste. And, and what I, the, the strategy I adopted was to um, have the, you know, the source in a folder on my desktop and then open the code in another folder in my editor and just copy and paste and modify and, and stuff as I needed. I didn't, I didn't start from the actual source because uh, this my debugger, it there's several different versions of it that you'll build. You'll start off with a very basic skeleton and build it into the kind of the pinnacle of the or the, the end goal of the book. So the, the version and the, the code download isn't where you'll start at the beginning of the chapter when you look at if you were to follow along in the book. So um, I'm almost at 15 minutes. This is a good enough spot to stop. Uh, when I pick up the next video, um, I will we'll start looking at that debugger code.